all women are queens. If she breathes, she's a fuck! So with EA's recent history of Star Wars, when I first heard the words Fallen Order, and yes, I mean literally the words since Fallen Order's debut was literally just dropping the name at E3 and nothing else, really made me think nothing of it. Battlefront 1 and 2 were so neck deep in controversy, I was cynical hearing about yet another Star Wars game until I heard Respawn Entertainment will be the ones taking the lead. After experiencing the Titanfall series myself, I swore I would stand the fuck out of Respawn, and while I may have some major hate towards EA, on the flip side, I have some major trust in Respawn, and that trust was rewarded in a Star Wars game I can personally call good after all these years. Now with Fallen Order, Star Wars may be heading in the right direction, but there's things preventing it from being a total knockout the park. But honestly, if these things are improved on in the next game, that's already rumored to be in production by the way. I believe the sequel will be a 10 out of 10. Let's start with the setup. You play Cal Kestis, a ginger Jedi trying not to get straight up murdered by the Empire in a post-Order 66 era. Due to some events, Cal meets a duo who wish to restore the Jedi Order and this is actually the first problem and strength I like to point out. Giving us a blank slate of a character is exactly what we should be getting. While it'd be cool as hell to play as a well-known character, it's always nice to have some new faces in Star Wars with stories that we have yet to discover. But we already know where this story is going. I mean, come on, are we really supposed to expect this new kid to restore the Jedi Order when even by the recent trilogy, which just finished by the way, and I, you know, I actually kind of enjoyed, but that's another video if you guys are interested, we know the Jedi are long gone. It reminds me of Halo Reach. From the beginning, you know the end. I wish we could get a Star Wars game where a Jedi survivor says screw the Jedi Order and tries to carve his own path instead of clinging onto the past. Before I get too negative, let's talk about the cast and their strengths. Kel, in my opinion, is your pretty typical Jedi good boy. Personally, I found him to be extremely generic in the first half of the game, and I swore you could switch Kel out with Jonathan Joestar and nothing would change. Other than Dio freaking out that Jonathan can now use the force along with Haman, and he has a lightsaber. Thankfully, after the halfway mark, I found Cal to finally shape into his own character, and this is where I actually started to like Cal. While he may have started out as a generic good boy, Star Wars has always had a focus on character development and having us watch characters begin to shape themselves and their ideals. Once Cal stopped going Jedi this, Jedi that, and started giving us details on what he's struggling with is when we can understand Cal as a character. But you know what? Enough about Cal. Let's talk about the real star of the show. BD-1 is your companion robot and enters the new era of lovable Star Wars babies you want to protect, right under Baby Yoda and the newly introduced Babu Frick who I would also gladly die for any day. BD-1 only speaks in beeps and boops, but manages to have such a clear personality with him to the point when Cal was being generic, his conversations with BD-1 started to show some actual qualities of friendship that I liked between them. BD-1 is your huckleberry. He will help you in combat, gather upgrades to unlock new areas, and open loot boxes for ye- Ah, oh, shit. I just- I just fucking realized EA managed to work in loot boxes in another Star Wars game. But whatever. Most importantly, BD-1 has this really weird penchant for scanning dead bodies to the point where I was wondering if this counts as some type of necrophilia? BD-1, leave the dead body alone. BD, leave it alone. Hey, BD, knock it off. Alright BD-1, what do you want to scan now? Wait, BD-1, no! As time goes on, you'll get attached to this little buddy through his interactions with the characters and how damn useful he is. Finally, we got Seer and Grease, and honestly, I don't have too much to say yet again because here's another problem with the game. The story itself ends when it feels like it's beginning. As I mentioned earlier, it wasn't into the last half of the game where Cal finally grew some character, and this stays true for all characters in the game. A majority of the game is hinting towards the characters' beliefs and feelings, but we don't get the true reason behind this till the end of the game. Hell, there's even one character who I won't mention that's introduced solely into the game. It felt like she was there for less than two hours, and the sad part is, in those two hours, I actually liked her more than the other characters because we immediately got to the meat of who she is instead of having to wait after, what, 60% of the game is done? 
I can't really say any of these characters are bad because the game ends as soon as you f actually find the characters within the characters. Now I will say, I think the story is my only major issue with the game because gameplay wise, I think it's fantastic. The story of the game left a lot to be desired, but because of the gameplay, when it ended, I felt satisfied enough to the point where I was like, damn, I need a cigarette after all of that, and I don't even smoke. Okay, I'll be honest, it was a gameplay in a straight up hype ass sequence that happens at the end. The ending has such a satisfying set piece that a lot of the Star Wars fans are going to be satisfied. Trust me, that shit was awesome. Okay, let's talk gameplay, because with the game focusing on becoming a Jedi, you bet your ass I was expecting this game to make good on that. And honestly, it does. Personally, I think to get the most out of the game, you should play on hard mode, because the game nails what's the difference between weak enemies going up against a Jedi compared to strong enemies. When you go up against weak enemies, combat is flashy and stylistic. It's hard not to feel like a Sith because all you want to do is style on these little shits like you gave a Devil May Cry character a lightsaber. Holy shit, imagine Virgil with a lightsaber. He actually wouldn't know how to behave with it. On the flip side, against strong enemies such as bosses, the combat becomes slow and methodical. As you are fighting your equals, but that's exactly how it should be. If I'm going up against someone with a lightsaber and force training, I'm expecting them to give me a fight. I don't want to style on them because they're so easy. I want them to give me a challenge. When going against a Sith, I feel like you're getting the best Star Wars experience as the fights can be cinematic and challenging using the gameplay to its full extent. But yet again, I have another problem with this and that problem is I wanted more cool ass boss fights. Seriously, it's the coolest shit to be blocking lightsaber blows and dodging force attacks while retaliating with your own stylish attacks. Speaking of stylish attacks, using the force and finding new ways to make your enemies look like pushovers by abusing it is extremely fun. There's nothing like a plague trooper. That's what they were called, right? Shit. Oh no, I already forgot. Oh my god, I'm getting I'm getting exposed on my I'm getting exposed in my own video. Oh. Um, but yeah, there's nothing like a plague trooper pulling up on you only for you to yeet the dude out of the map. The problem with this though is while the powers are cool and very fun to experiment with, they're also very predictable. I'm serious, there's four powers in the game. Stop and think of four Jedi powers in your head. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a minute, alright? Alright, this Dora Explorer shit right now. Ow, I, ex I hit my thigh. Alright. Okay, chances are you got all four of them right. I wish we could experiment with unique powers we haven't seen before in the series. Give us Jedi mind tricks that could turn our playstyle into a Jedi trickster who strikes enemies down while they're confused. Or give us a defense options like force barriers to turn our character into a defensive tank. Finally, thank the force, they decided to make this an open world metrovania type game. I mean come on, what Star Wars fan doesn't like seeing new worlds and the creatures in them? Exploring each new world is always a satisfying experience. As you learn about the local wildlife and much more from the stories of the people who live there to the cultures that have been developed in it. Each world feels unique with different terrain to navigate along with different enemies you have to fight. No two worlds felt similar to me which is good cause I would be pissed if we had a whole galaxy to explore and we somehow got two identical planets, you know? Only major nitpick I can give is all of these planets are majorly rural and like foresty with you not visiting any major cities or towns. It would be really, really cool for Cal to travel to a major city and fight the Empire and the Sith on top of rooftops or inside cantinas like we saw in the intro of the game. If you're a Star Wars lore nerd by the way, or as I like to call them, uh, Mandalorians, <laughs> get it? Man, Man, Mandalorian, but like for lore and please, please don't, please don't close the video. I, I, I'd really need the views and like, I like doing, anyways, anyways, the game has a tons of it with a database to store all the information you find through BD1 for you to read over. Overall, there's something for everyone here. If you like exploring the world to exploring the overall universe. As you can see, the game has its problems, but it does so much right to the point where I have absolute faith in respawn handling Star Wars games in the future. Look at Titanfall 1 and 2 with 2 being a massively improved experience just makes me excited for what respawn could possibly throw at us next. It's not a perfect game. 
but in my opinion, it's one of the best Star Wars games we have gotten in quite a while. And I hope its success will shout a loud ass message to EA. You see, I like, I, I get so triggered by EA, even like my voice kind of cracks when I say them, but a loud ass message to EA saying, hey, we like cool single player shit, so give us cool single player shit. If this is the future of Star Wars, I think it looks bright. And for once, I'll be eagerly awaiting news on a follow-up of the series, which, I mean, we kind of did get, but whatever, we'll see. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, what if instead of like a sequel to Fallen Order, we get a sequel but focusing on Sith? And no, I don't mean like, I don't mean like a character that starts off bad but then like defects. I mean someone who's actually straight up evil and give us like cool gameplay mechanics like Force Lightning or Force Choke Me Daddies. Anyway, I'm Chris from Genuine Chill. If you liked the video, you should like the video because it helps us out a lot. We're a smallest channel and like literally every single like helps me and I appreciate every single like. And if you'd like to talk more about the game, please leave a comment. I always read the comments and I love hearing what people have to say. As always, thank you for chilling with me.